Hello everyone and welcome! I just received my white little box with the little lips on it and we all know that means an exciting new order because I received some new lipsticks from Lisa Eldridge. And I'm going to demo all the lipsticks that I got but I think most interestingly we're going to try out the new limited edition shade in Velvet Bloom that she released recently on occasion of opening her brand new counter at Selfridges. She used to have a pop-up store I want to say in London that was there for a while and now she has like a permanent you know location at Selfridges which is a huge achievement for her it is absolutely fabulous I can only be just very jealous of everyone who can pass by by her counter anytime that they want to but for that occasion she had released this new shade in Velvet Bloom and I think the first 200 people to go to the opening of the counter were going to get that shade for free. And for a while there I was actually really jealous because I thought that the rest of us are not going to get to enjoy the shade Velvet Bloom, which in hindsight is really stupid. Why wouldn't she, you know milk more money out of us. She knows us well, she knows we're going to go crazy over a new velvet lipstick, so obviously it was like really dumb of me to assume that we are not going to get the chance to purchase the lipstick. But I do want to say it is a limited edition shade, I don't know what that means for Lisa Eldridge because I'm not sure that she's done limited edition lipsticks before, maybe she has the one shade that was like a, something with Audrey Hepburn like that um, coral shade, like that apricot coral shade. I don't know the name of it. I think it was a Lucent and I think it's been long gone. So it is very well possible that where she says limited edition, she means limited edition. Uh, that's not to like enable you. I'm just saying that if you are interested in this shade, you might not want to sit around thinking for too long. Anyway, let's start off with the two lipsticks that I ordered that are uh, not new, but they're new to me. So I ordered another one of her Lucents and they come in the be most beautiful beautiful like classy elegant white boxes for whatever reason I associate white with like really elegant and like the white with the little golden logo on it is just the epitome of classy to me so I ordered the shade pa painterly because I adore the lucent formula like truly madly deeply I think if I have to pick my favorite cream lipstick formula it will be the lucents just because of qualities that I've noticed in these lipsticks that not a lot of if any other cream lipsticks have to me they are comfortable they are a little bit glossy but they're not overly glossy and I don't mind overly glossy but uh, overly glossy for me usually means that a lipstick is going to start bleeding throughout the day and they wear off in the most elegant beautiful way um, sort of like being blotted down to a more matte finish and they remain behind a little bit as a stain so I just absolutely love everything about these lipsticks I wish she had like a hundred offerings of these lipsticks in her collection she has a um, very many beautiful colors I own a couple of them and I adore a couple of them but like I said, the most recent addition that I've made to my collection is this one. This is the shade Painterly, which from memory is described as like a rosewood shade with a little bit of like chocolate notes to it. Um, honestly, looking at the lipstick, it looks absolutely beautiful. I would be very curious to compare this to Meet Me in Berlin, which is like a more like grungy 90s kind of uh, brown lipstick and Spirit the Way, which is more of a, like a terracotta. I think it's too different from Kitten Mischief, so I don't want to swatch it next to Kitten Mischief. But I'm going to apply it first on my lips. I'm going to start with the loosen because they are the easiest to remove. And then we're going to swatch it uh, just on the back of my hand against uh, a couple of other shades that I think are similar in her collection. This is really beautiful. Do you know what this is reminding me of? And I now remember the reason why I thought I would like this color. Because I think it's the Lucent formula of Velvet Blush. I don't think she refers to the two shades as being uh, closely related. But to me, they are more than cousins. You know, there is some sort of like a straightforward inheritance there. Because to me, this looks exactly like a more toned down, less opaque version of Velvet Blush. I see these rosewoody tones just beautiful. I'm gonna go grab blush from my backpack because it's actually I had it with me uh, at work today I was wearing it earlier today so I'm going to go grab it and we can do a comparison swatch. Let me show you the two lipsticks just in the bullet next to each other. So on this side here we have the velvet you can obviously see just from the texture of the lipstick that this is the velvet the shade of velvet blush and on the right side you have the shade painterly. Now looking at them 
I think clearly because the velvet is much more pigmented and it is actually described as a pink berry. You can clearly see the berry tones when you compare the two lipsticks. But I would like to see when I put them on the back of my hand how much difference is there really going to be. I think maybe Painterly has a bit more chocolate undertones whereas blush has slightly more of those berry tones. But I'm going to kind of use them interchangeably. I'll be honest with you, to me the shade Painterly is basically the loosened version of the shade Blush. So if you are for some reason not a fan of the velvets because you don't like like matte pigmented opaque lipsticks but you really enjoy this color, then I think Painterly is basically the same shade but in a creamy and sheerer formula. So there you have it. Just for shits, let's also swatch right here next to Painterly, the shade me, it Meet Me in Berlin, so you can see how much more grungy and like cooler toned and brown this is compared to Painterly. Painterly clearly has those very pronounced rosewood tones. And last but not least, and I think it's again going to be very different, is the shade Spirited Away. Let's watch Spirited Away right here. Wow, that is the absolute ugliest swatch in the world. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Spirit Away is much more of a like a terracotta shade. No, this almost looks like a little heart or a butt, wherever your imagination takes you. Anyway, I'm sorry for the ugly swatch. You can clearly tell the more terracotta tones that Spirit Away has. So I am personally really, really happy because the shade Painterly certainly adds something to my collection. I adore the shade Blush. But it's really nice to have this shade in a lucent version, just in case I want to wear something a little bit more sheer or my lips are having a bad day and I prefer a cream lipstick to a matte one. Also, just in case you were curious and it wasn't clear from the odd lighting that is in my room right now, because usually my lighting isn't as bright, it is once again late afternoon in the day. I'm just filming. I just had an opportune moment to film <laughs> very late in the day. So that's why the lighting is looking a little bit more different than it usually looks in my room, since I usually just film very early in the mornings before I go to work. Anyway, that's probably totally irrelevant to you. Now, the next lipstick we're going to talk about is another velvet. This is the shade Velvet Muse. I had been contemplating this lipstick for the longest time because I wanted to have something that is a little bit more like a classic nude from her velvet line. I have sorcery, but sorcery is certainly more on the deeper nude side. I have a fair, but a fair has a bit more of those like grungy tones to it. We can compare later. But I wanted something that is a little bit just more toned down, but still in the velvet formula, because I love how plush and velvety this formula looks on the lips. So let's apply Velvet Muse and coincidentally also have the pencil, but I'm not going to use it right now because I'm going to remove the lipstick right away. But I can show you the um, how the lipstick compares to the pencil because I'm actually really curious about that too. You can tell from my wonky application technique that I do need a lip liner. So let me compare the lip liner in Muse to the lipstick. Now I really really like the lip liner because the lip liner is pretty much a perfect um, lip liner if you want to use like nudes, if you have something a little bit more peachy, so it goes really well with Kitten Mischief as well. But I have the feeling that her lip liners are sometimes like warmer and lighter than the actual lipsticks. So I'm just super curious how these two are going to compare to each other. Oh, this is probably one of the best matches that I have seen in her line between the liner and the actual lipsticks. These match quite perfectly with each other. As far as the lipstick goes, this is a classic case of my lips but better. If I plastered velvet over top of my lips but the velvet was made of the exact same color as my lip color, this would be it. So I actually am really really happy with this because um, I think Muse compared to Affair has more pink in it whereas like I said Affair has a little bit of a grungy note in there. So let's compare the lipsticks. Yes, look at this. This is Muse, this is Affair and you can tell the slightly pinker notes that Muse has. So let's swatch now a fair. Mm, let me swatch that right here next to Muse. Yes, perfect. You can 
like just so clearly see those like slightly more like yellowy leaning tones that a fair has compared to muse and the slightly pinker undertone that muse has this is very satisfying i'm really enjoying this and last but not least we can swatch sorcery although i think sorcery is going to be just a completely different tone of lipstick but because for me it falls under nudes i wanted to show you so this over here is sorcery deeper grungier even though it is one of my absolute favorite news i adore sorcery and now the moment that you and i have both been waiting for let's open velvet bloom i mean i've already opened it and i've already admired it but i haven't done anything past that point and i cannot wait because this looks absolutely delicious I'm going to go on the website just to see how she describes the shade. A flourishing nuanced pink red uh, inspired by the rough blooms of an azalea. And this shade is a classic face brightening red that suits everyone and it is a great tooth whitener. Ooh, we like that. Okay, yes, this is definitely a pink red. Very clearly this has very strong like uh, deep reddish tones to it. And to me it almost looks like one of those like purpley sort of leaning reds. I've seen reds like this before um, but I'm just very curious how this is going to look on the lips and how it's going to pull on different people because I have a feeling this is one of those lipsticks that's going, that's going to pull slightly different undertones depending on your own lip color. So I can't wait to put it on but first we're going to do a little swatch here on the back of my hand and later we're going to compare to other reds in Lisa Eldridge's collection. Gorgeous. It has a bit of a mutedness to it. That's also another thing that I, I think is really special about this shade. That even on like the website, when I saw the pictures on the models, it just looked like the most beautiful red with those like strong purpley pink raspberry tones to it, but with a mutedness to it. Doesn't this remind you exactly of the color of a raspberry? Anyway, I also have the matching lip liner, so we're going to do this the right way. I'm going to line my lips and do the whole spiel because I'm planning on wearing this lipstick the rest of the day. And here you have the lip liner. They match pretty well. You can see from that smile that I can't suppress how happy I am with this color. It is gorgeous. It is exactly like it looks on the models and on the promo photos. Because sometimes I find with lipsticks, yeah, you know, it looks like that on the model, but it's going to look nothing like this on me. And this looks exactly like it looks on the models. It is a pinky red that is a little bit muted and it is just so lovely. And I have to agree that I do see those like brightening qualities uh, against my skin. Now today's probably not the best day for me to be wearing this lipstick because I think a lipstick like this would look absolutely glorious with like a very muted neutral eye and a, like a white t-shirt. Oh my gosh, then it's going to look at its absolute best. Today, I mean, I can still wear it. It still fits the rest of the colors that I have on my uh, eyes and the color of my shirt. It's not the worst combo in the world, but I can definitely tell you I cannot wait to wear this lipstick with like a white shirt or a white dress. Something that truly makes this lipstick the focal point of my face. I cannot wait to try that. I am so happy with this lipstick. Now, now let's move on to a couple of comparison swatches. I have a couple of uh, red lipsticks here or like reddish pinkish type of colors from Lisa Eldridge that I would like to compare to. Uh, first I pulled out the shade Velvet Duchess which I think is going to be much more of a classic red but I think it has also these like slightly more purpley undertones to it. So it's almost like a deeper and brighter version of this shade. Like I said this shade to me has a bit of a mutedness to it whereas this is just slightly more vibrant overall but i think they are sort of like in the same family i think on the lips they do look quite different from each other you can definitely tell when you're wearing one versus the other it's not like you're duping yourself by buying both but there are certain similarities between them uh, next up let's watch to the absolute classic red shade from lisa aldrich which is my beloved velvet ribbon and 
where am I going to swatch ribbon? I removed the nudes, so let's swatch ribbon right here. Ribbon is much brighter, it has a lot more blue tones to it, it's going to, it's just going to look much more like a classic red. This is a completely different shade of red. If you're a nerd when it comes to red lipsticks like I am, these two lipsticks have nothing to do with each other. Especially on the lips, I can promise you, ribbon looks completely different. Okay, let's also swatch the shade uh, Skyscraper Rose, because Skyscraper Rose has also these like bluish... Um, bearish purpley tones to it but I think it leaves much more purple than it leans red so let's watch this one right here so you can see the difference it is also so much more vibrant and punchy in color and definitely not muted like bloom has muted tones to it and I think when you compare it to something as bright as skyscraper rose you can tell how much more muted this shade is and I think finally I would like to swatch Strawberry Shock as well. Strawberry Shock is also quite a different sort of red in my opinion, but for shits and giggles I thought we can add it to the bunch. Again, much more vibrant, much more, much brighter in tone, much lighter in tone, and overall completely different shade of red. So there you have it, a bunch of Lisa Eldridge red lipsticks compared to the new Velvet Bloom. I feel like there isn't really much more to add at this time. Basically, I'm just extremely happy with my purchase. I love the new shade. I am very happy that I purchased the other two shades because, you know, in the past half a year or so, I've basically been using like 95% of the time my Lisa Eldridge lipsticks because I just love how they look on the lips. I love the undertones. I've just really fallen in love with her lipsticks, if that wasn't clear. Do let me know if you picked up this new shade of Velvet and I'm just super curious whether it looks the same way on you as it does on me and as it does on the models that are demoing the lipstick on her website. Anyway, thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!